Okay, great. Thank oh, okay. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. Um, happy International Education Week. Um, I will be talking today about how to write a strong statement of purpose. I will be happy to share this presentation too. So don't worry um, if there's something you want to reference later. Uh, I also will leave time at the end for questions. And I really want this workshop to be useful to you. So please feel free um, as I'm going, you also can, and can pause and ask questions as well. Um, so we can get started. Oh, and a little bit about me. I'm a student researcher or Fulbright student researcher in Kyrgyzstan. So I'm based in Bishkek um, and I'm doing research about the Dungan and their connection to China. Uh, and I attended Boston College in uh, Boston, Massachusetts in the United States. Okay, so I will get started. Um, so what is a statement of purpose? Um, a statement of purpose. It is an essay that creates a, a picture or profile of the author. So the rest of your application for university or if you're applying for a fellowship or a grant can be um, a little bit impersonal. Maybe it's your grades, your transcripts, something, some letters of recommendation, but a statement of purpose is an opportunity to share more about you, to give the admissions committee an idea of who you are um, and get to know you as if they had met you in person. So it can also be a personal story. Um, we can think about it as giving context for your life. So um, some background that would give more information to the admissions committee um, when they're reading um, other parts of your application. It's a way to share your goals and ambitions. So uh, we'll talk about this more, but it should definitely be future oriented and talking only about relevant experiences that help you um, help guide your vision for your own future. Um, because of course, everybody would like to get into the university that you're applying to or get the grant, but this is your opportunity to talk about how this will be useful to you and why you're a good person um, to take this opportunity and turn it into um, a stepping stone in your goals. Um, and then this is sort of a, a mechanics thing, but it should always be written in the first person. I want to study biology. I want to do this. Don't write about it in the third person, like Grace wants to study in Kyrgyzstan. Um, it's important that it's a personal statement with a personal voice. Okay. Um, next slide. So uh, a statement of purpose is not, uh, it is not your resume. Uh, most applications give you a section to include your resume. Uh, and a resume is very formal and very impersonal. A resume, as you know, lists your accomplishments very plainly and also your experience, but just in a line or two. But this is a space for color and personality to share, um, to share the story that your resume doesn't tell. Um, it's also not a plea for admission. So this for sure is a good way for your personal statement to be ignored if you come across as desperate or over, um, overly demanding of the admissions council. So if you say something like, I just, um, all my hopes and dream rest on going to this one university and you have to understand I'm the best applicant in the field. Um, it's desperate and it also can be sort of arrogant. So it's important um, to share your accomplishments, but not, um, not to come across too overly emotional. Um, it's also not a diary entry. I'll talk more about how there could be, um, it could be relevant to share a personal story, but um, there's a difference between uh, sharing a, a relevant story and oversharing. So certainly um, it's important not to, um, not to give too much information about yourself, especially if it wouldn't be relevant for the admissions committee. 
Um, and then on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's also not an academic paper. Sometimes students or applicants feel compelled to write an academic paper about themselves. Um, this isn't interesting for anybody to read. It's also not really the point of the personal statement. The, um, you're supposed to share your personality and your background, whereas an academic paper is formal, it has a thesis. And um, so don't think of your thesis as let me into your program. Um, think of the paper, of, think of the personal statement more as almost like a conversation where you're introducing yourself. Okay. Um, the objective of your personal statement. Um, you're writing your personal statement to give the admissions committee a fuller picture of you as a candidate. Um, you want them to know more about your background, but also be able to imagine what you would be like in their program or if you got their grant. Um, you're objective is also to create more depth for your candidacy and illustrate your personality. So um, it would be appropriate to use sort of like professional humor or a personal anecdote um, that would make you a more colorful candidate. Um, but of course, not, you mean, not overdoing it. <laughs> um, and then this is also a chance for you to connect your ambitions to your personal background. Okay. So elements to include in, um, in most personal statements. So many writers choose to open their personal statements with a surprising statement or a personal story. Um, this is called like a lead. And um, you may have learned about this if you've studied writing a newspaper article or anything of that sort. But you also, um, even in this context where we're writing about ourselves, it can be useful. Um, it can be a useful way to make the essay more interesting if uh, you open with um, an anecdote or something of that sort. So for example, my... Um, my application for my Fulbright grant, um, I began by talking about a hiking trip that I took in Kyrgyzstan um, that went really badly. And um, it, I mean, the story wasn't so long, but I was able to share some elements of my personality and also some experience that I'd had in the country already. Um, and, but I also had to work many drafts with my mentor to make sure that I wasn't sharing too much about this crazy adventure story because I needed to leave space to talk about my goals and connect it back to my grant. Um, other elements you should include, relevant experiences and your course of study. So if you're applying for a graduate degree or an undergraduate degree, um, there is a path that led you to that decision and this is your opportunity to explain why. So maybe, um, maybe you are applying for medical school and or public health degree, and you talk about um, you could open with something about getting a doctor set when you were a child um, and always wanting to help your help people who had been injured, and then you talk about taking an advanced biology course later. And so you sort of connect this narrative that leads you to the next step, which is the thing that you're applying for. Um, also your motivations for choosing your intended course of study. Um, I guess I just touched on that a little bit, but um, specifically why, why this field? Um, I would say, don't think of it as like an interrogation. It's not that they're doubting that you're interested. It's more that you're trying to convey that you um, are passionate about this field. Um, so future goals after the university, or if it's a grant, um, after the grant in your career. Um, and then this is really helpful if you can relate your goals to the mission of the program. So for example, um, uh, if you were applying for a Fulbright grant, then you might talk about how you will share your culture after the grant 
or share your experiences with your community when you return. If you're applying for a particular scholarship for a university that emphasizes community service, you could talk about how you want to do a service project after university, something like this, um, that shows the program or the university that your values align with their values. Um, and then again, details of relevant successes or strengths that you have as a candidate, but don't copy and paste these straight from your resume. Um, be sure to, um, I mean, presumably your most important successes would be on your resume, but you should be giving more detail or um, a story about it or connecting it in some way that's not immediately obvious from your resume. Okay, am I going too fast? Does anyone have questions at this point? Uh, excuse me, uh, Professor. Uh, yeah, keep going. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Oh, that. okay. All right, we can also do more questions at the end. I just just wanted to check. Okay. Um, things to avoid. Um, so things to avoid. These are like common mistakes or pitfalls in personal statements. Um, overly formal speech, especially excessive praise for the university. So oftentimes students think that they will get, um, they'll get better, oh, sorry, um, that they'll, they'll um, make the admissions committee like them if they tell them how, tell the committee um, how wonderful their university is or uh, how well ranked or something like this. But um, I guarantee you the university uh, already knows that they are a good university or the, the grant already know, the grant committee already knows the grant is very uh, prestigious. So um, I would avoid sentences like, um, it is with great honor that I apply for this most prestigious grant. This sort of language is kind of a waste of space in your personal statement. Um, and it doesn't advance uh, your narrative at all. Um, okay, other things to avoid. General phrases that lack personal specificity. So um, there's a lot of statements that uh, whether people have heard them before and they use them unintentionally, or maybe they read them in other statements, people say things like, um, I've always wanted to be a doctor or something like this. Um, I mean, everyone applying for the program probably has always wanted to be a doctor. That's why they're applying. So it's more important to share uh, something specific that has led you to this goal. Um, gimmicky speech. Um, this applies more when when people, um, I think this, hmm, how can I explain this? It, a lot of times you'll see like the same sort of um, language trick where it's something like, what's the definition of courage? And then, you know, they'll define it like, some something you've read before um, in another friend's statement or online probably isn't going to set you apart. Um, it's more important to use your own language and um, your own voice. Um, passive voice, we will talk more about this, but passive voice uh, basically is any time that the subject of a sentence is also the is the object. Um, so I have some examples of this, but um, this is sort of a grammatical thing, but it also is a style of writing that slows down the reader um, and it wastes space in your application. Uh, you also don't need to repeat information from other sections of the application. So for example, if you're applying for a grant and you have a personal statement as well as a grant statement, um, the personal statement should not just repeat the grant statement. It should, you should think of the word limit as um, not as something that you, that you are trying to fill up space to reach, but as something that you're trying to economize your words. 
just to use, um, to convey as much information as possible in as few words. Okay, and then this last point is really important. important. Um, I know applications are really stressful. There's a lot of example applications on the internet, or maybe some of your friends have written them before, but you have to use only your own words. Never borrow material from sample personal statements. That is plagiarism. Um, and it's also not effective. The admissions committee will be able to tell. They have seen those example statements hundreds of times, and they are experts at reading personal statements. So um, the best words you can use are your own. All right, so um, this is uh, an example of ways that you can strengthen your essay. <clears throat> and this applies for um, writing in general. This is a useful skill when you're writing a resume or an academic paper, but it's especially useful for a personal statement. So um, active verbs. Active verbs give precision to your language. Instead of speaking generally, or um, with like really using the same verb again and again, um, just switching your verbs to active verbs can make your essay more interesting and more specific. So um, I found a list here that I was gonna share, but there's lots of lists online you can find by searching keywords like active verbs resume. Um, however, I'm not encouraging you to switch every single verb in your personal statement. Um, I would recommend just to use an active verb that you know the exact meaning of. If you're not sure, you can check the dictionary and the thesaurus to see um, what are similar words and what does this one mean. So there's some active verbs on this list. Um, so in, so I think I have an example on the next slide, but some of um, this is just a few of them, but there's so many online. Um, and also you could talk to a writing tutor or somebody who can help you strengthen your language. And I wouldn't think of this as a checklist. I would think of it more as a toolbox, something that you could reference if you are reading your own application and you realize that you've repeated the same sentence structure again and again. This is a way to make your writing more exciting and more meaningful. Um, this is also really useful if you're ever applying for a job um, to give concrete achievements. So you, um, you observed uh, some piece of data instead of I learned or something like that. So, okay, we'll talk more about this. Um, I have an example of swapping an active verb. So I also changed the sentence a little bit, but I think we can see the difference between these verbs. So I felt happy when I got the prize in the ninth grade science fair. Um, so changing I got the prize um, in the next sentence. My interest in biology was first validated by the prize I won in the ninth grade science fair. Um, so this is an opportunity to use a stronger verb um, and also tell a story that is continuous. So we can imagine today that maybe the author of this application, um, I mean, I just made these sentences up, but maybe someone writing this application is now applying for a graduate degree in microbiology because they were first inspired in the ninth grade. Um, so these sort of verbs are, can be really powerful. Okay, so um, another construct, uh, avoiding passive voice. Passive voice happens when the object of an action is positioned as the subject of the sentence. Okay, so this is a grammatical thing. I can definitely answer any questions about this. Um, I think it's also confusing because um, if you're a Russian speaker, it's uh, really easy to translate to English using passive voice because in Russian it's possible um, to convey meaning just with the conjugation. But in English, it's really important that the order of the sentence um, um, is nuanced and has active voice. Okay, so um, an example of passive voice, the mouse was caught by the cat. Um, this is passive voice because the object is the mouse, but we're positioning it as the subject. 
So um, simply switch that to the cat caught the mouse. You can see that this is also a shorter sentence, which is really useful when you're writing an application with a word limit, but it's also a more interesting statement to read. Um, okay, so maybe this is also just a sentence I made up, but this might be more relevant to um, an app to language we use in applications. Kyrgyz history is interesting to me. Um, so even though I'm the one who's interested in this sentence, it's inverted so that Kyrgyz history comes first. So instead, uh, you can I should write, I am interested in Kyrgyz history. Uh, and that is a more uh, active sentence. Okay, um, I think I'm nearing the end of my presentation and then I would love to answer some questions. So just to review um, some successful strategies for writing a personal statement. You should ask a mentor or a trusted friend to review your drafts. Um, you don't need someone to rewrite your application, but it's important to have someone review your work, um, particularly someone who knows you well. So I can say in my own experience, when I was applying for my Fulbright grant, um, I had a professor that I had known for most of my time in my undergraduate degree, who I was really close with. And um, when I wrote my drafts of my application, we looked through them together and he said to me, these are good, but they don't sound like you. I know you and you're more interesting than the statement you've written, which was really helpful feedback. And then he put down my drafts and we talked about what it was that I would want to share with someone who'd never met me, what is most important to me, and um, why I was applying for this grant specifically. Um, so that was a conversation that was helpful to me because it was someone who knew me well. So that's why I say a mentor or a trusted friend. Um, if there's not, if there's someone else in your life, that's okay too, um, who doesn't know you as well, who's willing to review your drafts. I just think it'd be a good idea to have a conversation with them to say, this is who I am and this is why I'm applying because that's really what you're trying to convey in your personal statement. Um, carefully check spelling and grammar. This is so important. It's probably the least fun part of writing, um, especially if English is not your native language. But even if your content is really good, the application committee um, will discount your candidacy if you make simple mistakes with your spelling and grammar. Oh, something else about reviewing your dra drafts and checking your grammar. Um, I would encourage this whenever you're writing, but you should read your presentation out loud to yourself to, um, to check sentence structure, to see if it's readable. Um, your ear can hear a lot that you might miss when you're just writing it silently. Okay, other successful strategies. Make every sentence count in your application. Don't waste space with repetition or formalities. Um, a formality that happens a lot in an application essay that that can just be deleted is something like, thank you for your time and consideration. Um, you don't need to put this in a personal statement. It has no place there. Um, maybe that's something you say in an in-person interview, but um, when you have only 500 words, or don't need to include those kind of sentences. Also avoid run-on sentences. Um, run-on sentences are exhausting to read. And the application committee has thousands of essays that they'll be reading. So you want your language to be effective and active, and you're going to use all of those good verbs. Um, and then most importantly, do not be afraid to be yourself. Um, and then I'll share the presentation as well. These are some more resources that could be useful um, from things that I shared here. My advice when you're, if you also feel inspired to search for more resources, um, you can see that all of the resources that I've linked here come from universities and colleges. Um, so a lot of universities in America and in Great Britain have what are called writing centers. Um, so this is for 
current students, but also prospective students to help improve their writing. And there are so many useful resources that are free if you go to a writing center website um, and they're written with academic standards in mind. Um, so this is just a good way to find good information because otherwise there's some, if you're on a website like top 10 things to avoid, that might be easier to read, but it's not really so useful as um, an academic guide to writing. Okay. Um, we still have half an hour. That is my presentation, but I um, am happy to answer questions or give more examples of anything I talked about. So um, please feel free to speak up with questions or type in the chat um, and I will open up the discussion um, for questions now. Uh, hello, uh, excuse me, Professor. Uh, I have uh, maybe two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, can we, uh, for example, uh, use uh, this sentence in a statement of purpose? For example, someone applying for a scholarship, uh, you know, uh, uh, just write in a you know, in statement that this university is top in this country and it has a best environment, student environment and uh, study facilities. Uh, and the second question, uh, if someone is applying for a scholarship, uh, can we use uh, or can we write, uh, if I receive this scholarship, it will be your uh, you know, university pleasure with me helping uh, regarding this issue, for example, in this scholarship. Uh, and I will, be, I will be very happy if they award me this scholarship. Uh, and the third one, uh, uh, if you don't mind, can you please write uh, you know, a, a small sample of a statement of purpose? I'm a law student. Uh, it doesn't matter if you write in a, a different type, you know, a different uh, major or, or faculty. Uh, for example, short, uh, a short a statement of purpose uh, in, a, in screen sharing. Uh, we will see how do you know how to format it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay. So um, a few questions. Let me see if I can remember. So your first two questions were examples of language. Um, so um, I the first the first statement you shared was about um, sharing, uh, writing a sentence like, this is the best facility and resources, your university has the best facility and resources in the country. Um, I mean, I haven't read the whole personal statement. I would generally try to avoid um, a, a general, like some statement like this, it's very broad and generalized. It could be more useful to say something like, mm, you could connect it, that statement to your own ambitions. So you could say, uh, you said you are applying to be a law student. You could say something like, um, um, you know, using the, the prestigious um, network with this well-rated university, I will be able to find relevant job experience in the field of immigration law. That's just an example, um, I'm, but I'm showing how you, maybe you could connect that sentence um, to your own plans to make it more personal. Because um, if the university uh, is well-ranked, then they probably already know that and they don't need to read that in your application. Um, but I also, I haven't read your personal statement and I'm not saying that you've written it badly. I just would say generally it's useful to um, speak with more personal language in a personal statement. Um, could you remind me of the next question? I think you shared another sentence. Uh, yes, <clears throat> the second question was that, that I can use this sentence if I receive this scholarships, it will be your pleasure with me. And I will never forget that uh, this assistance. 
yeah, same uh, sentence like this. Can we use in the end of statement of purpose? Um, yes, but I would again try to make it more specific. So, um, uh, maybe you could ch change the sentence to be like, if I receive this scholarship, um, I will have an opportunity to study in a country that I otherwise would not be able to. I'm just imagining um, how that might be more specific. I don't know your own circumstances, but um, of course you would be, anybody who received a scholarship would be really happy to receive it. But the best way um, to make yourself a competitive applicant is to speak specifically about your experience um, and your plans. You also could say something like, I received this scholarship, um, I will be able to fulfill my dream of becoming a lawyer in this field or a lawyer who helps these people. So, um, but it sounds like you've got a great start to your personal statement. Um, I would just encourage you with both examples you shared to find ways to be more specific to your own plans so that um, you can convey, um, you can convey like how this is relevant to your life, um, not just me. I mean, anyone would be really happy to receive a scholarship or really happy to study at the best university, but um, the, adding specific details can set your application apart. Um, and then the last question was to share a personal statement. Um, I do have my personal statement for my Fulbright grant, but I was going to wait to answer any other questions. And if we have time at the end, then I would be happy to share my personal statement um, with the group. So I will come back to that one. Thank you for your questions. Um, is there anyone else with any questions or points that they'd like to clarify? Oh, so I had a question about what is the best way to end your like uh, personal statement? Because um, do you just like summarize your personal statement or you like thank the university or I don't know, could you please help me with that? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, that's a really good question. It's always hard to wrap up an application essay. Um, I think there's a few different ways you could end it, but a good way to end um, would be maybe with a statement about your future plans or um, so maybe something like, uh, just for example, if you were applying for a university degree program, you could say something like, um, if I, I'm successful in my candidacy. I look forward to to be to one day becoming um, a biologist in the field of um, uh, I don't know any biology fields. Sorry, that was a bad example. But I look forward to one day becoming a lawyer who will help other immigrants to this country or something like this. Maybe you could share some some future goal. Um, could be a good way to end an application. Um, I would not include a sentence like, thank you for your time and consideration, um, because these, uh, these sentences are um, what we call platitudes. They're sort of general, um, and the application committee, uh, they know that you're grateful that you're, they're reading your application. You don't need to include that. Um, you also could end maybe by concluding the anecdote that you shared. If you chose to share an anecdote, you could um, end by uh, sharing some hope for yourself for when you're in the program. Something like, I'm, you know, if accepted, I'm really eager to take this course or study with this professor. Um, some sort of almost like a parting hope or goal. Um, I, but of course, there's a lot of ways to write a statement. These are just my own opinions and ideas about how I might write it. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Thank you. Yeah, that was helpful. Are there any other questions?
I'm sorry. I think you should check the like comment box because oh, you're like. Oh, sorry. I think I have to. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um. Hmm. How? I don't know if I can do that while I'm sharing my screen. One moment. Oh, chat. Here we go. Oh, there's a lot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Um. Can I write a personal statement to the Global U Grad program like this? Um, Itergon asked. Yes, absolutely. Um, this is a general, um, this is just sort of a general approach to writing personal statements. This would, these tips would be helpful for writing personal statements for scholarships, personal statements for, um, uh, for grants or for university or um, postgraduate studies. Um, Saika, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing names wrong, asked, what is the difference between project statement and statement of purpose? Um, that is a great question. So um, a project statement and a statement of purpose. You should definitely check the particular application that you're applying for, because the names can be, sometimes they can be really similar. Um, but for this presentation, I'm talking about a personal statement of purpose. So some, so you might see this kind of thing. Um, you might see it called a personal statement, um, a statement of intent, um, statement of purpose. Generally, a project statement might be for a grant or a fellowship where you have a specific project in mind. Um, and the project statement is going to detail your goals in that project and the specific research questions you're trying to achieve, whereas the statement of purpose is about you. So a good way to compare the two, um, a personal statement or statement of purpose is about the researcher or the applicant, and the project statement is about the research or the proposed project. Um, the introduction part of a personal statement. How can we start it to get the reader's attention? Um, that is a really good question. So, um, I mean, I think your question, um, your question actually does share um, some of the answer, which is, <laughs> Um, you want to start your introduction with a strong statement that can get the reader's attention. So um, instead of just saying, um, I am applying to this program because I love um, history, you could share a story, uh, a personal story. You could share a surprising statement. Um, you could share this would really depend on what field you're applying for, but I've seen people successfully connect something to a current event or a historical event. So you could say something like, um, I remember when, you know, uh, I remember a historical event in my country that influenced my worldview. Um, that's just an example. I mean, that wouldn't be relevant for every field, but something sort of personal and original is the best way to start the personal statement. I also, just for the process of writing the uh, personal statement, um, I wouldn't be too stressed about the beginning. When you start writing, you can, you can write the personal statement and return to the beginning. Um, in my own experience, when I wrote my personal statement for my Fulbright grant, um, I definitely, I changed the beginning sentence like a dozen times because I just wanted to get it exactly right. And I wasn't sure what the right point of entry to my story was. Um, another thing, if you're telling a, if you choose to share a personal anecdote um, in your personal statement, it could be useful instead of beginning at the very beginning of the story, you might choose an exciting point to enter the story. Um, if that makes any sense. Um, I hope that helped answer that question. Um, but yeah, I mean, also, if you don't have the flashiest or most exciting first sentence, it's okay that, you know, the rest of the application can still be quite strong. Um, 
can I say the exact difference between the statement of purpose and a motivational letter? Um, I, <laughs> I don't think I can say the exact difference because I'm, I really don't know myself the difference there. I think what's really important, um, it sounds like everybody here has, some people are maybe applying for university or some for grants. Um, the best thing you can do for any application is to read all of the application instructions. Um, and generally most grants or um, scholarships, fellowships have a website that has resources about their application that will tell you more specifically, this application is comprised of these parts. Um, personally, I'm not sure what the difference is between those two without seeing a specific application. Uh, okay. Oh, and then Callaway also shared in the chat for anyone that didn't see, um, he'll be talking about research proposals at four o'clock. Um, and he's uh, my fellow student researcher here in um, Bishkek. And um, he, between both of our presentations, um, I think they'll be really complimentary and you can learn more about other parts of an application. Um, okay, we still have a few minutes left in this session. Are there any more questions or is there anything that folks would like to revisit? So guys, you have some minutes. If you have the question, you can ask Grace. If you're not, I think we can uh, finish our session. Okay, I think it, it was enough and you answered for the, all the question. And thank you, Grace, for your time, for your presentation. And I think I'm sure that it was very helpful for our participants in writing their purpose. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Grace. Have a nice day. Thank you all so much. Good luck with your applications. Uh, hello. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, uh, I want, you know, hello, Chris, uh, if you don't mind, can uh, you write your email address down in the chat? Uh, if you need, for example, some more assistance, we can, can we email you or? Um, yeah, I think um, the American Corners can connect you to resources as well to help with applications. Um, but you're welcome to email me. Um, I can't personally edit um, uh, personal statements for people that I don't know well, but I, um, I certainly can give general tips. Um, so feel free to reach out to me um, if you need to be connected to more resources. Um, I, I can't offer to edit anybody's personal statements that I haven't met or know personally, just because um, that's not something I'm comfortable with. But if you need general advice, um, you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. You, if, if you need some, some time advice, it's, we will contact you. And thank you for uh, your time to give us and thank for your helpful and efforts, appreciate it. Thanks. Yes, yes, thank you for attending. Yeah. Thank you everyone for your nice messages. Um, yeah, and good luck. <laughs> and one comment for everybody. So yes, of course, we have the all recordings in our YouTube channel, Bishop American Spaces. You can find all the recordings there. So I think we finished. So bye, everybody. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone.